We're in Indianapolis at the headquarters of the Indiana High School Athletic Association, about to meet the brand new commissioner of the IHSAA. There's a new sheriff in town, and his name is Bobby Cox. When was it uh, announced that you were going to take over the commissioner responsibilities here at the IHSAA? It was on Friday, August the 6th. And how long have you been with uh, the organization here? Uh, I am in entering my 11th year now. It doesn't seem that long, does it? It uh, Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get to know Bobby Cox uh, before we get into the meat of it. Uh, what's your background? Are you from Indiana? Did you go to college in, Indi in Indiana? Went to uh, college in Indiana, went to high school in Indiana, taught and um, coached in Indiana for 21 years. and was an a athletic administrator before I came to the association. I came here in 2000 and has served as an assistant commissioner uh, up until through this year. And uh, starting February 1st, I changed jobs. Where did you go to college? Went to Butler. Ah! <laughs> So how was that uh, for you as a Butler grad watching was, them in the Final it Four? Great. It was great fun. We, uh, we were actually in St. Petersburg on spring break, and uh, we had a group of folks that were at a restaurant, and we had the center table right in front of the big screen, and it was this small group of six people wearing Butler shirts, and everybody else wearing Michigan State shirts around us, and when Butler beat them at the end, the whole restaurant vacated except our six. <laughs> it was pretty neat. <laughs> so now moving from the assistant commissioner up to – Commissioner, and now I'm assuming that the four remaining assistant commissioners will work underneath you. What what changes in your chair in that sport code are you going to have to see? Well, I don't I don't typically look at it as they work under me. We work together. Well, we that's all, the way I look at it. They, you're the boss, man. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, somebody's got to be the boss, and I'm, I've uh, accepted that role. Uh, I could have turned down the offer, but I didn't. Uh, but. The, the fact of the matter is we all have responsibilities that we need to execute to our best abilities to help the student athletes of our state and our membership. And so my job's going to change, and, and I'm going to deal more with, with uh, philosophical things, uh, attorneys, legislators, programmatic things from a, a global scale, while the assistants will deal with the, really the nuts and bolts of the association, the running of the tournaments, uh, the execution of of transfer rulings and things of that nature. So your responsibilities change. You have oversight for, you know, you're the chief executive officer of the association. So you, you have oversight over all operations. And, and with that comes the opportunity to evaluate how you service the membership and what you're going to do in the future to be a better service organization while remaining conscious of the fact that you are a regulatory group and you have rules and you have to enforce the rules and they're the rules of the membership. And so with that said, we have to make sure that our membership understands our rules and that they're clear and that we enforce them consistently as they would like them to be enforced because they're their bylaws. Mm -hmm. They're not the IHSA bylaws and they're not our staff's bylaws, they're the membership's bylaws. And so we need to make sure that they understand those and, and there's a rationale for why we have them. Are there platforms or initiatives that you have in place that you want to get off the ground when you take over the, the office of, of commissioner here at the IHSAA? Well, in my press conference last week, I talked about the fact that we need to reach out to our membership and, and, and find creative ways to help them financially. Uh, all schools are struggling, and it's not just an Indiana issue. It's a, it's a nationwide issue that uh, school funding and, and trying to find money for education, and that includes what we call education-based athletics and the paying of coaches' stipends and the paying of transportation to get schools, uh, teams from point A to point B and returning. Those dollars are becoming ever so tight and, and shrinking. So we've got to look at ways to try to partner up our members with other groups out there that can help and then do some creative things here at the association that can return some dollars to the membership so that they can continue to provide programming for kids. The, the fact of the matter is the economy is tough everywhere and, and it's affecting our schools and schools are having to make some really tough decisions and that freshman basketball coach at a certain school may be released because they can't simply afford to do it anymore. Well when that happens there's going to be 12 to 15 young people that don't get the chance to play. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we're about. We're about participation. We want kids to play. So we've got to help in that effort to make sure that those kids have a chance to play 
and the schools have the ability to field the program and to, to manage the program and have the funds to do it. And, and we can't be the savior. I mean, the IHSA can't fund 410 member schools athletic programs, but we might be a conduit to allow the members to partner up with somebody in their own community. Somebody they might not even know that we have a relationship with, or we might know somebody that, that doesn't even know that their school in their own community has done something that has taken opportunities away. So maybe we can be that conduit to help facilitate the discussion at least, and maybe come up with some ways to help schools fund their programs, help them stay solvent, help them do things, and, and, and hopefully as our economy recovers that uh, they can expand and offer more things for kids to do. So this transition, uh, you take over the commissioner duties February 1st. So from now till then, how's that transition working? Is everybody smiling? Is everybody happy? Is it pats on the backs? Are, you've got a list of people that you're going to fire immediately? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have a list of anybody I'm going to fire immediately, that's for sure. <laughs> we really have a great staff here. And I, and I echoed what Commissioner Russ said uh, earlier, that I think we have the best staff that we've ever had at the IHSA currently. Uh, with that said, we all have the ability to improve and, and refine what we do. And so we're going to uh, take an analysis and look at uh, what we do with the association, how we do business, uh, maybe we can do things a little bit better. Uh, I still have a job here as assistant until February 1st. Uh, we still have a, a very important football tournament to run. Uh, we'll be getting into the winter season. I have responsibilities in the winter. Uh, we have to find somebody to replace my current position, and I'll be involved in that. So with that said, there's going to be a lot of things that will happen between now and February 1st before uh, Commissioner Ress retires and I assume his position. We'll wrap this up by asking with your, your 10 plus years here at the association, what's been your favorite single moment at a game or a tournament? Well, there have been a lot of them. I, I know it's hard to wrap it's it up with to, one. It's but hard to pick one, but I'll tell you the one that jumps out at me uh, right off the top of my head is uh, during our boys basketball tournament a couple years ago, um, one of the duties that I had at the state basketball tournament for the boys tournament was to uh, work with the mental attitude award and I would uh, work with our board and they would select the mental attitude award winner and then I would work with the school and let them know that their candidate was going to be the winner and we would bring the parents and get them in a position to bring them on the floor. Well uh, the year that Luke Zeller hit the half court shot in overtime to beat Plymouth he was the mental attitude award winner. And uh, I had talked to their athletic, their athletic director, a basketball coach, I talked to the principal. And the principal helped me get the parents down, and they were down in the end zone. And, of course, the game ends and it's tied in regulation. So now they're standing down there and saying, hey, I'll wait, you know, we're going to have an overtime. And so they're all excited and everything. And then when uh, Luke hit that shot, the mother grabbed me around the neck, about broke my neck because she was so <laughs> excited. And then she apologized for what she did. And I said, no, you could be excited. That's good. And, uh, you know, I, I remember that moment and just the joy that the parents had, not only in winning the ball game, but then it all sunk in that not only did they win the game, but now their son, the first award is going to be the Mental Attitude Award, and this young man's going to win the Truster Award for basketball. And I think when you get involved in those kinds of moments, they're very special. I, that's one that jumps out at me.